I uh, was born in uh, Mar del Plata, Argentina, in there. This is the town I was born. And I am the only girl after seven brothers. <laughs> um, I have older parents. <laughs> And my father's my greatest uh, influence he was an architect, and uh, that's my mom in front of a painting uh, that my dad loved. Cut to many, many years later. I kind of after going to college for graphic design, you know, I gravitated more towards uh, fine arts and started taking some classes, you know, your, your lab drawings and stuff. Although I usually like more watery, informal, intuitive uh, type things. It's all small acrylics. I, I, I like, I think the house I grew up in that my father designed always comes to me very just white, washed, mm -hmm. you know, brick and stuff like that. And for the most part, my painting has been um, without an idea of what I wanted to do, other than sometimes a, a commission or something, but just, you know, moody, <laughs> um, abstract landscapes and things of that nature. Um, I work fairly quick, and I do like graphics as well, so sometimes I combine the, the looseness of the brush mark with some graphic elements. Um, these are two different paintings, but um, <laughs> I got to a point, whenever stuck, I just uh, realized that all I need to do is start kind of from zero, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of just following my own line, kind of like a beginner's mind type thing, but then led to some paintings that I kind of like, and, um, and then just more and more of just lines in different ways and in this case very precise as opposed to loose in order to kind of like concentrate on something and not let my mind um, get the best of me and um, yeah sometimes I like to go wild and sometimes I need to stay very pristine Dots and circles are another savior for me um, <laughs> in order to just get the creative flow juices going when, when stuck. And then again, it may lead to some paintings. Um, what a happy accident. And at some point in 2011, I was completely distraught in a day like that. I went to the stationery store and got some air dry clay. That it just, and I never stopped. I it was just I just did a thing and I marked it because I knew it was the beginning of something for me. And I just started doing this with air dry clay, mm -hmm. and it was like no thinking, just direct approach to the material, and I, and I <coughs> loved it. And I loved it. And then, you know, I took a class of art art. Our student the guy, the teacher, this Russian guy, was very encouraging. Then I joined the pottery people at Light Arts, and I kept, I kept going, <laughs> and I get, um, I also change a lot. I kind of get enthusiastic about something else, and I go and do it, um, and I haven't been able to, and I'm happy now with the fact that I do like to do different kinds of things and I, that's my way of following my bliss. When I force myself to stay within a certain kind of painting and a certain kind of thing, I find myself very unhappy. So then, you know, I continue to experiment and then, you know, of course, doing functional pieces is really a lot of fun. So you can't avoid that. And, um, Pinch pots, I can do that all day, all night. And, and try different things, you know. It's, the, the ceramic world is such so vast that, you know, little by little I incorporate mm -hmm. new techniques, but I'll never know it all. And so I keep, I keep uh, trying different clays, different glazes, and um, lots of 
failures, lots and lots of failures. It taught me a whole lot about patience and detaching, letting go of things that you put a lot of work into and they break and they come out horrible or whatever. <laughs> but it's just so, it's just my thing. I, I continue to paint and I'll go back to it, particularly in the winter, um, but I just feel completely enamored by the medium. And that's like an old drawing and a newish ceramics. I realized that everything kind of sort of comes together. This is Raku that I've never done before, and so and I, I'm, I'm enjoying Sgraffito, trying to do things of this nature. It's just pleasurable. I, all, the, all the different stages of clay, whether it's mix, you know, reclaiming clay or trying, you know, putting stains in it and creating uh, this I did the other day, and I'm working on it right now. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of work, but every this is when it's leather hard, you know. It's called leather hard. It's just delicious. And the other day I started trying to spray, and I made a little stamps and put some. Mm -hmm. just, I don't know. Just trying different things. I just and this is again I just did the other day and. I started carving through it. That's, <laughs> oops. Oops. That's how I roll. I don't know how that computer. Now, recently, I started making a bunch of different components. Uh, some not knowing what I'm going to do with them, and some I do. I did, and then, and then I kind of start working with them from a different perspective and start putting them together. Um, and that's a, a, a different part of the brain working, and also enjoyable. Um, this porcelain and rope. Mm, that's, um, terra sigillata is, is, for those who don't know, is a like a slip, like a liquid clay that is wonderful, and then you carve through it. So basically. I just keep doing different things. This is now I work at a collective uh, in East Hampton on Gingerbread Lane. This is my studio here in Amagansett. That maybe another week before the call starts. That's it. Questions. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So, what did the seven brothers do? Were <laughs> the artists? Yeah. Artists, uh, writers, actor, architect. So, all the creative. From the, some, yeah. Nice. Three of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.